Hey, good morning. Good morning. It's May 2nd, 2022, or good afternoon, probably by the time I get this uploaded. I have to tell you that after yesterday's very polite, very pointed discussion of the evidence we have so far in the Summer Wells case, this is the last video I thought I'd be making the very next day. Let's look at a couple of definitions, because you know I like to bore you guys to tears with definitions, but it's important. A short con. What is a short con? A short con refers to taking a, the mark for all the money he has on his person. It's an opportunist scam that isn't pre-planned. A long con, or a big con, refers to a more complex planned con whereby the mark is sent to get more and more money or used to get more money that is just on his person at the time. This is the first video published on October 6, 2021 about the Summer Wells case from this channel. Notice that at the time, that person only got 133 likes, but well over 3,000 views. Those views have come since that video not for that video on that day. This is last night's video, over 6,000 views, streamed six hours ago. Why is this important? Because this is the same lady who presented Rose Bly's cousin as Rose Bly, the missing daughter of Candy Hare, and that story has been debunked. The lady that was presented as Rose Bly after 12 years of having been missing is not Rose Bly. It's her cousin. Instead of apologizing or, you know, making good on making a mistake, we'll give her that. She might have made a mistake. This channel that I just presented doubled down and is now presenting messages from so-called friends of Candy Hearer as being truthful and fact when they are not. And so let us hear from Candy Hearer I'm putting up Queen Bee's channel disclaimer for the video where Candy Hair spoke out. And I stand on both permission to use this audio clip as well as the disclaimer that Queen Bee has published. For those of you wearing headphones, there is a clicking or a bumping of somebody's microphone. I try to reduce that noise as much as possible but in the end, I could not. So you might want to adjust your volume. I did boost Candy Hair's voice so you could hear her as clearly as possible. Here we go. Yeah. I'm going to speak for me because it's only right that everybody knows that these people are scamming me, scamming for money on YouTube, and it's just not right for people out there to be sending them money and putting posts out there whatever they want to talk about but we've been friends for going on 10 months did you guys hear that maybe play it again because the beginning cut off where she mentions us by name okay well it does say a first and last so i didn't want to okay. put that out that's there fine. you know what i mean that's fine is that okay to put it out there or do you want to wait absolutely no it's fine Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just play it again. I'm going to go ahead and play it again then so that they can hear it. You know, let me know if you need to put it on there. See, oh. Grandma Mama said, yep, that's Grandma. So, yeah, this is confirmed, Grandma. This is Candy Hair. I just want to make sure everybody knows that so there's no questions and no one saying it's not her. It is definitely her. And she did give both of us permission. Okay, I'm going to play this again. Okay, Rebecca and Susan Ross are my friends. And they're going to speak for me because it's only right that Everybody knows that these people are scamming me, scamming for money. I do yeah, it's just not right for people out there to be spending their money and putting posts out there, whatever they want to talk about. But we've been friends for going on 10 months. So yeah, that is her. And she did give us both permission to come on here and talk on her behalf. And yes, that is her. You can go back and check the interview at WJHL, I believe it is. Um, and you can go back and check that as well. That is definitely uh, Grandma Candace. I'd here. like to thank both Rebecca and Susan for publishing the clip as well as Candy Hair for recording it for them, setting the record straight about 
the things that this particular channel and many, many other channels have published that are nothing more than lies and scams. That's all I can say about it at this point. The people who are publishing these long live chats with little tidbits of information that they blow up out of proportion are doing so for clicks, views, and super chats. If you as a viewer or a subscriber or a member or a guest are giving those types of channels your hard-earned cash, then you've been warned and you've been told in no uncertain terms that it's a con, it's a scam. There's no truth, there's no proof, and it needs to stop, as Michelle After Dark has said this morning. And I'd like to thank Michelle After Dark for covering this, usually because she's five hours ahead of me, She's the first person who informs me, and I go out and do my research. So thank you again, Michelle. I've enjoyed your content immensely. I hope I've gotten my point across, but if I haven't, here are some things to look for. Reliable channels provide sources for their information. They will look something up in a live stream if they don't have the answer to a question. They will not block viewers for asking uncomfortable questions. They do not hashtag with a hot topic for clicks and views when the content has nothing to do with the hashtag. And finally, they give credit to other channels for the work the other channels have done. And I'll tell you a little something that I've never mentioned before because it just made me shake my head. A while back, I was watching a live stream, or no, it was a produced video by another channel. And because that person doesn't know how to use Streamlabs or Restream, whichever they were using, they were looking at their browser window with was several tabs up, but they showed all the tabs that were up. And when looking for the content that they wanted to present next, they hit my content. It was there plain as day you can recognize that particular content by the graphic that was being used. And that tells me that that person was using me as a source, but not giving me credit for anything that uh, I had produced in that video. I didn't copyright strike that person because they didn't land on the video and quote from it directly without giving me credit. But it did let me know that there are people watching my videos and taking my content without giving me credit. That channel is monetized with quite a following and has raised money in Super Chats quite a bit. So what does that mean for this channel? The reality of what happens when channels do these kinds of things is they suck all the air, all the views, and all the shares from a channel like mine so that this channel gets virtually no views and fact-based information gets no play whatsoever. You as a viewer are giving them your views, your likes, and your super chats, then you are perpetuating the misinformation and the poorly produced content out there on the Summer Wells case and other cases, by the way. And as long as I'm spilling the tea, here's another little tidbit of information that you might not be aware of. A lot of these channels are calling for collaboration and cooperation and let's help each other. Let's let the people who have a gift or a talent in one area, you know, be recognized for what they do and somebody else who does something different be recognized for what they're good at, blah, 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 blah. You know what the reality is? I've given information to other channels, big channels. I've said, here, here's this little bit of information during your live stream you didn't have to hand. I've already done the research. Here it is. You're free to use it. I never get a thank you. I never even get a response. Moreover, when I've asked these other channels, hey, can you answer this question? You covered this in your live stream, but I was unclear about what you said on this point. 
you never get an answer. So much for collaboration and kumbaya. Somebody out there will undoubtedly take a clip out of this if it even gets any views at all and say, oh, look, she's just mad because she doesn't get views. No, I'm not. When my channel first started getting more views than it would normally get, I panicked. I, I almost went to a creator that I admire very much, and you all know who that creator is if I would name that creator, and say, what the hell do I do if this keeps going at the rate it was going, I'm going to be in over my head. What did you do when that happened with your channel? I sat myself down and had a good talking to with myself and said, look self, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, don't worry about it now. And sure enough, things even themselves out. The point is, is if you are supporting these channels who are spreading lies and misinformation and conning you for super chats, then the content I produce isn't what you want anyway. You want to be lied to, you want to be conned out of your money, and I'm not about that circus. That's it, I've spilled my tea, and didn't intend to by any means, but considering that this other channel has doubled down on their misinformation, now's as good a time as any to tell the truth about what I see happening from a creator's point of view, and also from a subscriber's point of view. Thanks for joining me. As always, my subscribers, for whom I produce fact-based content, I appreciate you very much. And God bless you. I will see you real soon.